go round, Ollie, have a look at the exhaust and see what you've got coming out of it. I haven't seen this P4 in a while, probably a couple of seconds because I'm going to edit this even though it was days apart. What we have been doing is this is the one which we took the body off, we flipped the body over, we did the welding underneath, and we put the body back over and I think our last video was putting the body, marrying it back to the chassis. So we've put a couple of new batteries in there, we've started rebuilding the front, putting all, checking all the ancillaries. What we're doing now is whilst the Jeep is stripped down we're flattening it back. So there's a good few layers of paint on there. We found there's sort of the factory primer, then it goes into a green, and then there's the three-tone camouflage finish, brown and then black. So what we're doing is we're flattening it back. There isn't any rust in the uh, body, actually. Uh, there was a little bit on the underneath, but we've sorted that out. And we'll be now uh, putting it into a base coat. Um, this is the really good stuff. I mean, it just makes a whole vehicle become like a sort of like an eggshell finish which is perfect for taking any sort of paint on top of it so all of the works really in flattening back and getting rid of any blemishes then into the bar coat and then on with two or three uh, layers of what we would call uh, kermit green simply because it's uh, quite a bright then we'll go on to the brown and then the black and uh, hey presto we'll have a finished jeep so everything mechanically is looking really good on it all the welding's been done i'll run you around now on the bodywork with the camera and uh, then we'll just uh, crack on and uh, quite a dusty day so but the weather's been fantastic so we're working outside so the vehicle's now in um, a primer and a bar coat. So it's a bar coat, high build primer, where we've got a few little scratches. We sanded them out and just put um, high build on, sanded them back to try and make them flat. Still got a final um, going over on this. So we've done it, uh, started off on uh, a 60 grit, then went to an 80. Now we've done a 320 on it. And we're just gonna finish off with a 500 just to get that back ready for the final coat. Uh, bonnet's looking good as well. 
quite good to try and find one. All of them have been dinged. This one's uh, not bad, actually. So a nice solid bonnet to go on it. So a good day's work. the Jeep in its base colour which is a very light I think it's called uh, new forest green uh, what happens now is we're going to go into the three-tone camouflage so we're going to be putting on a brown and then a black and you'll see how all of that have dulled the vehicle down at the moment because it really does at the moment look like Kermit and Miss Piggy's uh, ride for the day um, so things are going pretty well uh, put a new radiator in as well uh, because we found a slight uh, leakage in the one that was on there originally. You can see that we've done the dashboard, just refurbished it. We've gone through all the electrics, so absolutely everything's hunky-dory, including the fuel gauge, which is always a problem on these if they've been sat for any length of time. So, we've got a brand new roof to go on there, so I need to get that down. We're going to put the brand new roof on, we're going to put the windscreen on, we're going to put the doors on, and then we'll be able to do the three-tone camouflage. You start off on a brown and then you go on to a black. There actually is a pattern for it. It was um, uh, laid down by the French army, so you usually find basically you put a nice brown diagonal stripe over and the corners are done in black. So you'll see when we've got it done and you'll recognise it immediately. So time waits for no man. I need to crack on and get the final parts put onto this ready for us to go into the next set of colours trying to get hold of one um, brand new is well uh, like rocking horse uh, excrement also <clears throat> costs quite a lot of money for example if you want a brand new body for one of these that's just the body tub then that's 5,000 so you've got like 5,000 and then you need to add the doors it sort of 400 each and then the windscreen at about another 400 um, and then the roof in total comes to about a thousand pounds so we've got one over here that's just been delivered so they are high quality there's no complaints um, you can see it they're all pressed with all the original fittings as per uh, the NATO issued one so I don't know whether these are actually stock or they've been remanufactured um, but they're of a high quality and we're really pleased with them so that will have to go on but as I said it's quite a costly investment <clears throat> so if you were going to get one of these and thinking of uh, spending the minimum you can on it please try and make sure you've got some sort of roof on it because they really are quite um, uh, painfully expensive to get a, a roof for welcome to workshop Wednesday but it isn't Wednesday so it's workshop Sunday. Doesn't sound the same, does it? Never mind. Here we are. The P4 is coming along leaps and bounds. So we've put the three-tone camouflage on it now. Um, this vehicle is going to go off to a private collection. Um, chaps contacted me, said, oh, I really like the look of that. I'd like that. So we're finishing it to his specifications. So therefore, he wants some added extras put on there. He wants it in a particular uh, camouflage scheme. So that's not a problem. If he uh, wants that for his collection, let's do that. So here we are at the finish now. So we've put new tires on, more of a civilian tires than the military ones. Obviously, therefore they're gonna be a little bit softer, softer ride for him. These are canvas tops, bought in from France, absolutely A1, really nice uh, bit of kit. Already talked about that before. Still fitting out the inside at the moment. So we're just getting the chairs done. That's the ones that are in the front and in the back. So we'll go over and we'll have a look to see how George and Chloe are getting on. And here they are, sitting down on the job. The youth of today. Um, they're doing a fantastic job fitting the seats, cushions to these frames. So these are the frames, the ones that go in the back. And here they are bolting on at the moment. We'll be able to get that inside of the truck. Ollie's off somewhere, nursing another hangover, I think, naughty boy. And he's finding the rubbing strips to go down the side of the vehicle. So we need to uh, prep those before those go back on. Meanwhile, I'm still putting on uh, the wheels. We need to bleed down the uh, clutch, because it's a hydraulic clutch. Because we took the body off 
um, and put it back on again. Then that's one thing we have to disconnect. There's a bit of air in the clutch, so we need to bleed that off so we start using the clutch effectively. So hopefully, fingers crossed, in this video, we will be able to show the first drive of this uh, since it went into the workshop. And that was quite a while ago now. Here we are at last. We've now finished at 99.9% .9 of the restoration. What we're going to do now is this is the first start that we've got of this engine since the, well, the beginning of the restoration because we've always pushed it around up until now, never actually running it. So let's have a look. I'm going to put on the dead man switch to get the batteries in line. <clears throat> I've put in a key here uh, on this one. So we've got all the lights on the dash. I'm going to depress the clutch, make sure it's in neutral. I'm pulling out the preheat. So we're just waiting for a little pepper pot to glow. So it's usually about 15 seconds, if you count on that. Um, if it's a really cold day, it might go to 20. Basically, it starts glowing. And then when it does, there we are. Ours is glowing, it's ready to go. So hovering over the accelerator, if I need a little bit, here we go, let's start it. First start. Checking in neutral, looks fine. Let's have a look what the engine looks like. We've got the finished Peugeot P4 back on the ramps for one final thing. You can see here quite clearly our uh, soundproofing really does make a difference. But down here, you've got the starter motor. Now this one's okay, but it's about every tenth time that you start it, it's not throwing the Bendix or the gear in far enough on this solenoid. So we're gonna take this out, should be quite loose now, and we'll put in a reconditioned unit. These are made by Bosch, um, so, they are quite easily rebuilt, so never throw one away. Always have them rebuilt rather than uh, buying a new unit. We have thought we'd finished with the P4 after these months and months of work on it. Yet during our thorough test driving, we found that the starter motor wasn't engaging fully each time. So we changed the starter motor, that didn't change it. So we went in, turned the engine over, looking in where the starter motor uh, actually is, and we could see that three or four of the teeth are actually sort of ground away. It must have been a really bad um, uh, starter that was on there before. Someone had been repeatedly trying to start it and it's just chewed those teeth up. That means that about every one in 10 start, you'd have a problem again. That's just not acceptable. So here on the floor, we have uh, another flywheel with some really good uh, teeth all the way around of it. We took off of a spare engine. So what we need to do now is, it was a toss up between take the engine out with the gearbox, take the engine out and leave the gearbox, We'll take the gearbox out. Gearbox out is the easiest out of the three, so that's what we've done. So here's the flywheel. Let's turn it over and see how bad the teeth were on it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not good. Look, those are, let's put it on edge. Put it on edge, yeah. So you've lost one, two, three, four, five half of the teeth on that part. I bet that's where compression is on number one, when it's highest yeah. compression, that wouldn't be surprising. And then we've got another one starting on the other side. We've got one, two, three, four teeth knocked off, nearly. At last, we are finished. It's just come off the ramp. So we split the gearbox off of the engine, we put in a new starter ring, and now it starts perfectly. I'll show you. Okay, so we're putting a key ignition in this one. So we turn it on, and we've got power, and we pull the starter straight away hardly a turn off it goes before it was a little bit crunchy so we're going to do a quick test drive and see how we're going we'll start by driving down here and putting on the brakes so driving down first into second into third and we're going to bang on the brakes now right that was perfect okay so We've got four gears to play with. We've got high and low ratio, uh, two and four wheel drive, and there's also diff locks on the rear in this one. The banging that I can hear at the rear has just reminded me that the aerials are um, hitting, the trees. hitting the trees in this rather overgrown uh, lane here in the West Country. You can actually see the mist. 
So she's driving lovely. The clutch is really responsive because we put in a new uh, friction disc. We've cleaned up the face of the flywheel and so it's gripping really nicely. So that's not a problem. Brakes, we had some issues with the vacuum on it, which turned out to be a leak at the master vac. So that is basically the big um, unit. It's on the other side uh, of the pedal and that's where the vacuum's collected and uh, helps increase the brakes. So that had a leak in it, so we've sorted that. So that makes the brakes even more responsive. And I'll stop talking now and we'll have a little listen to the engine. So, this is one of the quietest P4s I've ever driven. We've obviously got Civi tyres on there and we put some um, uh, uh, soundproofing under the bonnet which made a, a great difference. But that engine is absolutely sweet. And also it's got really good response when I put the uh, accelerator down. So we're going to go uphill now. And we're in third and then we're going to snap it into fourth. This is one quick Jeep. And on with the brakes again. Parfait, as they say in France. There we are. Our uh, labor of love, restoring that. We've had to let it go. It's gone to a new collector over seas. Um, it's a great shame, uh, but the actual issue is we are really struggling at the moment with what's behind me and that is the Panhard, where is it? It's over there somewhere, hiding, probably. <laughs> over here, we've got a Panhard AML, um, and it's just been an absolute nightmare from start to finish. Um, we are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds into this. The engine uh, has had to be rebuilt three times due to faults that have happened with it. Um, the electrical systems have been replaced twice. Um, it's just been an absolute money pit. Also, we're trying to source, or we have now sourced, uh, a 90 turret to go on top of it, because we're turning this into, and it always was actually, an AML 90. Uh, but that turret was uh, an incredible amount of money, and we've had to import it. It's not complete, so we need the parts for it. And you just would not believe the cost involved in finding parts for such a rare turret. So. Uh, unfortunately, what was a wonderful Jeep, we've had to let that go and everything is now being poured into this because we need to get this Panard AML up and running and we hope to do it by the end of the year. We're in 2024 now, so by the end of 2024. So a great shame. I didn't want to let it go. It was absolutely perfect, but a hard decision was made. Um, we've got a new owner. He's really happy with it. And now we're going to crack on with this. So look out for the next set of videos in which we will start uh, updating you on progress on the Panhard. And we'll get that turret out and start working on that soon. So thanks for watching. Uh, our next release is probably going to be something a little bit different. Um, possibly to do with uh, arms and armament. Um, won't say any more on that. And also we've still got some work to do on our uh, programme about the uh, jerry can interestingly to see how robust they are and what they can survive so stay with us and see you in the next video